One of the great things about the event-based power analysis software is how easy it is to run. Everything's available from one screen. For example, I'm going to go ahead and start it here. And you can see it starting up there. I'm going to maximize this. And the first thing I'm going to do is open the data file. So I'm going to file open, open the default data file, and click open. Now, as I move my mouse here, you can see it's showing the current, the RF power, and the voltage on channel 3 as I'm moving over here. So no matter where I am, I can always see what the current is, what the RF power, and what's on channel 3, which in this case is a voltage line for an LED. Now I can go over to here, and this is where I control the graphics. So for example, my title I could change to something else. I could say IoT Device Rev 2. If I don't like the, the word current, I can call it battery or whatever. I'm going to call this green. I'm just going to call it RF. And then this I'm going to call LED. And I can also turn on and off individual channels if I want to. So if I only want to see the battery in more detail, I can do that. And I can turn those on if I want to see all three of the items then. I'm going to go ahead and close that. And then I can use my drag handle here to zoom in on a particular portion of the waveform. So right now I'm going ahead and zooming in on just the section between these two drag handles. And you can see that's there. And furthermore, I can move left and right by grabbing that space there. And then I can, of course, zoom in and zoom in even further. And every time I do it, it's a factor of two. And I can zoom out and zoom out again. And again, it's a factor of two. And if I want to see everything, I can go ahead and just hit Reset Zoom. Now, if I want to perform an analysis, all I have to do is click on Settings here and specify exactly what I want to analyze. So, for example, I notice that the RF is mostly around minus 48 or so and occasionally jumps up to minus 10. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say, that the RF power, just give it a name, I can call it anything I want. I'm going to say when it gets above minus 40, but below zero, I'm going to call that RF. Now, if I had a pairing device that had a different level, I could uh, specify the range for that. But in this case, I'm going to just set it to something very high so that it will not uh, actually occur because we don't have a pairing device. So I'm essentially commenting that out. The LED goes from zero to about two and a half. So I'm going to say whenever it's above one uh, volt, up to three volts, let's say, I'm going to call that the LED. Okay. And then I'm going to specify a low power mode called idle. And I'm going to say whenever the current is around zero, so from negative 100 microamps to positive 100 microamps, I'm going to call that idle. And then if it gets above 100 microamps, but less than one amp, okay, so from 100 microamps to one amp, I'm going to call that active. And then when I specify the battery capacity, so let's suppose it's a 280 milliamp hour battery, I can then say save and analyze, and all of the different charts and uh, results will uh, update for based on those settings. I can see the results if I want to in a nice graphical format, a tabular format, I should say. And so you can see exactly how much time and charge was spent in each of the different uh, modes. And you can also move your mouse over to here see exactly how much time and charge was spent in the different modes. 
The bottom one is the time. And the top one is the charge. Over here, we have a CCDF, which is a complementary cumulative distribution function. And the way this works is the blue line represents the percentage of charge, and the yellow line represents the percentage of time. So, for example, I can look here and say that above 8.32 microamps, the device spends 98% of its charge, but only 9% of its time. The other way to say that is that 90% of the time, the device is operating below 8.32 microamps, but only 1.75% of the charge is consumed below 1.75, or excuse me, 8.32 microamps. So that's pretty much the interface. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, if you want help, you can click on the question mark to get yourself some help. And there's your table of contents right there. And if you want to save the, the actual uh, waveforms themselves, you can go to File and then do an Export. And that will save to uh, a CSV file. So it really is a very straightforward and easy to use piece of software. Thank you.